after 15 years at Kansas. Roy Williams has returned to Tar Heel country. But he'll have to keep stars like Sean May healthy if North Carolina is to rejoin the nation's elite. Tonight, speedster D. Brown and the Illini try to clip the heels. And welcome to the Coliseum here in Greensboro, North Carolina for continuing coverage of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. We've got a couple of unbeaten teams and a couple of ranked teams. Number 11, Illinois. Number 10, North Carolina. Each of these teams with its toughest test so far on the young season. As you can see with Florida State beating Northwestern last night and then Wake demolishing in the end of the night. The ACC, which has won all four of these challenges, has an early 2 to nothing lead this year. Dan Schulman here in Greensboro along with Dick Vitale getting ready for this game. And i got to say, you look, he's, got his, he's got his game face on tonight. But what, what, what color is this? I don't what know, color orange is crush, that? Orange crush. <laughs> orange you're, crush. You're in big trouble in champagne. I want no. you in big trouble in champagne. No. Nobody got me an orange we, shirt. <laughs> we got a couple of great point guards, as good as any in the country just about, right? Well, you know, you're the point guard, and you don't get two better than what we're going to see on the floor today. Our star watch has Mr. Felton and Mr. D. Brown. When you talk about speed and energy, D. Brown is the catalyst. Raymond Felton, everybody loves Raymond. He can really pass the rock. I really believe they're two of my own, Thomas Edison. They're creators, they're innovators. They know how to find the open man, and you have to have them to win big in college basketball. These two teams met in the ACC Big Ten Challenge last year. That game was up in Champaign, and Illinois won by 27, although it was about an eight-point game with eight minutes to go, and then the Illini just went wild at the end of the game. Roy Williams, of course, the head coach now of North Carolina, and when Bill Self went to Kansas to replace Williams, Bruce Weber went to Illinois from Southern Illinois, so we've got a couple of coaches in new places here this year as the Illini visiting Orange control the opening tip. Well, the one thing Roy Williams has done already, he has created a buzz about North Carolina hoops again. Nick Smith almost turns it over. It's going to stay with the Illini. Obviously, here in Greensboro, we've got a big North Carolina crowd, but some concerns as well about the health of the Tar Heels. Here's Doris Burke. Dan, depth will be an issue all season long for Roy Williams. He comes in tonight with some notable bumps and bruises, in particular, Jawad Williams, their leading scorer, suffered a hip pointer in practice on Sunday. He is on the floor to start the game. Jackie Manuel will also play. He had suffered a left knee sprain. Depth will be key tonight as Illinois will go at least nine deep, guys. I'll tell you one thing, Doris, for a starting five, Roy Williams' club to match up with anyone in America. They have four potential NBA players in their starting lineup. The problem is, as you said, Doris, so well, go into the men. There's the Illinois starting lineup, but it all begins in the backcourt for the Illini. D. Brown and Darren Williams, a couple of sophomores, each had outstanding freshman seasons, especially Brown. James Augustine is another sophomore. This is a young but at the same time, experienced team because all these guys got a lot of minutes last year. Well, they got a lot of minutes. They won the Big Ten tournament. They won 25 games before losing after beating Western Kentucky. They lost to Notre Dame in the second round. Keep an, eye, keep an eye on the matchup at point as Powell finishes strong on the feed from Smith. And it's the Illini drawing first blood. Nice pass by Smith. Excellent backdoor cut. Very unselfish. Look at the big guy. He draws a double team. Wide open. There's a great look by the seven-footer, Smith. Wide open. The foul on Jawad Williams, his first. And to the line goes Powell. He is off to a very good start, averaging better than 16 points per game for Illinois. He's an outstanding offensive rebounder, a guy that can do a lot of damage. I should look at Bruce Weber. Did a fantastic job at Southern Illinois to salute these. Here's the point guard matchup, D. Brown against Raymond Felton. Last year in this game, Felton turned it over eight times against the pressure defense of the Illini. The can't snow with the left hand, and ripping down the rebound is Augustine. Augustine could really run the court. What they're hoping to get out of him a little bit more this year, Dan, his post-up ability on the interior. Brown off the screen, free for the jumper, a little bit strong. Rebound, Sean May. Remember how important he was last year and how the Tar Heels struggled after he broke his foot. Now the bounce to the other end for Raymond Felt. If he makes jump shots, he's unbelievable. You can't defend them. He's like Langford up in Kansas. He can make the jump shot. Forget about it. Depending on who you ask, Felt considered maybe 
preseason player in the ACC. And Dee Brown got a lot of consideration. In fact, the media voted him preseason player of the year in the Big Ten. Preseason doesn't count, my friend. That's it's right. postseason that counts. Darren Williams for the bucket, and the Illini back up by three. We expect, like the Kansas Florida game, a bit of a track meet here tonight as Jawan Williams, bad hip and all, ties the game at five. Well, that hip looked okay to me in his warm-up. He's from out of the Cleveland area, had a big game, and they needed a big game out of him to beat Cleveland State. Mike Garland's club challenged them right to the end. Jawad Williams coming into play tonight is the leading scorer in the ACC at better than 21 points per game. Trying to take Smith away from the basket to utilize his passing ability. He's also got a nice touch inside. Stamina is a problem yep. for the big guy. Darren Williams might have gotten away with a walk. You can hear how the fans feel about it. And now over the back goes Augustine to commit the foul. Augustine definitely climbed the back right there. He was on underrated coming out of high school as you look at the starting five for North Carolina what a dynamic starting five and again they weren't sure they would have Williams in the starting lineup tonight because of a hit pointer that he suffered in mm -hmm. Sunday felt and May and McCants last year's terrific freshman trio they won the preseason NIT that May got hurt and Carolina wound up in the postseason NIT John May the goal on Smith Score the basket. May's got great ability inside, utilizes his body exceptionally well, and he's got soft hands, and always his daddy special. His daddy played up in Bloomington, player of the year, undefeated, the team in 1976. Look at him operating inside. It's blocked, and he comes right back. He said, I try with the left, now I'll try with the right. <laughs> 7-5 Carolina. May about 15 pounds lighter, Dick, than he was last year. One of the reasons he takes pressure off that foot. I'll tell you one thing. Had he not gotten hurt, I don't think you see Roy Williams coaching North Carolina. Roy Williams agrees with him. The three won't stay down for Smith. Rebound the Camps, who had 13 rebounds against Cleveland State. Oh, 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 oh. Now you know why everybody loves Raymond. Oh, they're going to love him in Chapel Hill. He is an absolute super sell. Mr. Felton. Now they're standing here in Greensboro. This may be a so-called neutral site game. Oh, uh, Carolina. <laughs> Forget about neutral site. Forget about neutral site, partner. Look at the blue all over this place. Carolina blue. Look at Felton. Going by Mr. Brown. Taking it up strong. Got that strong body. Lays it on the glass. I love it. Love his personality. Very unselfish player. And a timeout taken by Illinois with Carolina up four early. Now the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports continues tomorrow right here on ESPN with a couple of great games. Number 15, Georgia Tech, fresh off their outstanding performance in the preseason NIT in Columbus to take on the Buckeyes. And then, no, you're not seeing double. Both Duke and Michigan State are ranked sixth. They got the exact same number of votes in the coaches' poll. That'll be the nightcap tomorrow wow. night from the Breslin Center in East Lansing. Can't wait to get there to the end zone. It'll be a special place. That'll be rocking big time. You and I jumping on a big bird tonight. And we are headed with Doris right to East Lansing, Mr. Rizzo. Traveling in style to see Duke and Michigan State tomorrow night. Duke trying to bounce back from their loss to Purdue up in Alaska. That had nothing to do with the ACC Big Ten Challenge. But that's a big win for Purdue to be the team like Duke. And, and Duke struggling a little bit right now. Michigan State, Tom Izzo has changed his lineup. Now Kelvin Torbert, a guard, starting at the power forward position. McCants inside. Smith got a piece. And it's out of bounds to the Illini. You know, McCants is one of those great slasher scorers. You can play either the two guard or the wing. A la Matt Walsh, we saw him. As you look at Roy Williams, look at that winning this active coach. Unbelievable. 28 W's a year. As you watch Bruce Weber, coach of the year in the Missouri Valley at Southern Illinois. That's a great place, by the way, to salute these. Took them to the Sweet 16 two years ago. Yeah, beat Georgia. Lost to Connecticut. Darren Williams using the screen now has a mismatch with May on him. Pulls up for the jumper that drops. He is very strong, very physical, and he's asserting himself more. Bruce Weber told me he wants him to think a little bit more score than he did last year. Had a very good summer, played internationally for the USA, along with Dee Brown, and that's when Williams really started to pick up on the offense. Played with Paul Davis as well on that team. Jawan Williams, no, but May slams home the rebound. I love May's hands. I love his instincts, the feel for the game. He's got a great basketball IQ. What a miss he was last year when he went down for Matt Doherty. Four for May. Carolina's lead back to four. Williams trying to shake Scott. Now dumps it down. Fadeaway jumper for Powell. No, the tip is good, though. Back inside off oh. the bench. 
It is Roger Powell. No, it's Randall. It's Brian Randall who's checked into the game, a freshman from Peoria. Played offensive rebound by Randall. Got right down to the gutted defense. Nobody blocked out. There's a travel on D. Brown. They're really playing him really tough. They're beating him to the spot. They're making him work. They know he's the engine, and they are prepared. They've done a great job adjusting to the speed of Brown. Carolina by two early over Illinois. Well, Roy Williams was an assistant coach in North Carolina for 10 years in the 70s and 80s, and it was part of Dean Smith's staff when the Tar Heels won the 1982 national title. Then for Williams, it was off to Lawrence, Kansas, for 15 phenomenal seasons to coach the Jayhawks, leading them to four final fours. North Carolina lured Williams back to Chapel Hill in April of this year, and thus far the Tar Heels have been impressive on the court. And that led Bill Self to Kansas, and that led Bruce Weber to Illinois. And everybody's happy. Yeah, everybody's so. content. Yeah. They're all happy where there are. People love Bruce right now. I talked to Lauren Tate, fine journalist from out of the area in Champaign, and he told me he's got to really close. I watched him for 18 years. He was an assistant to Gene Cady, who did a fantastic job as a second lieutenant for Gene Cady in the great years they had to produce. Augustine back into the game for Illinois. He was out for Italy. Also, Luther had his chance into the game for the Illini, as has Jack Ingram. Raymond felt no to the jumper, and there's the rebound for Ingram, who was originally recruited to Tulsa by Bill Self when Self was there. Now finds himself playing for Illinois after Self left Illinois to go to Kansas. Here's a matched up on Brown. They've made it very tough for Brown to get touches, trying to keep the ball away from him as much as possible. He's so quick with it. We got to look right now for the line high with Mandy joining Williams and Brown in the back. Oh, the shot clock and here's 10. And oh, Roy Williams didn't like that. On the chance of foul way out on the perimeter. Let's go back to Doris Burke. Well, Dick, you just mentioned that uh, at one time, Weber was an assistant for 18 years to Gene Cady. It actually was perceived as a negative that he stayed at one school for so long. It wasn't until Athletics Director Ron Gunther at Illinois called Gene Cady three times. He said, listen, if Bruce Weber is successful at Illinois, is he going to leave? He said, listen, you've got a stand-up guy. He's going to stay for the long term. That enabled him to get a job. He said, finally, it, stay, it remained a positive for me. I'll tell you, Doris, he spoke to Gene Cady this morning. They speak regularly. And Gene was obviously on cloud nine with that win over Duke. May inside. Jumper a little bit strong. Rebound Augustine. Tar Heels by two over Weber's Illini here early. Williams on the drive. Ties the game. What I like about Williams, he's got a great body and he knows how to utilize it in taking the ball to the basket. He's very strong with the basketball as he attacks the basket. What a backward it must have been in high school when he played with Bracey Wright together. You asked him today, did you ever lose a game? Right. And amazingly enough, they did. Yeah, he said a few. <laughs> There's a travel on Luther Head. College football comes to ESPN2 Thursday at 7 Eastern with the Mid-American Conference Championship game presented by Marathon. Number 50 to Miami of Ohio, led by QB Van Roethlisberger, comes in with an 11-1 record. They'll take on a Bowling Green in a rematch of a regular season meeting, won by Miami. There's Jackie Manuel. He's got a brace on his left knee, injured it in the game over the weekend. Originally was not expected to play tonight, but has recovered quickly, practiced yesterday, and is in there off the bench tonight. Well, he's starting to understand what his strengths and weaknesses are. He's running the court really well. They're getting him to defend well, and he's coming off the bench and giving him positive minutes. And his big problem is understanding when to shoot and when not to shoot. And I really believe he's going to be a big plus for North Carolina this year. Also into the game for the Tar Heels, number 22, Justin Bolander, a walk-on, a 6'7 freshman from Winston-Salem. And Roy Williams says, here's all you need to know. He was asked again today, what's the difference between Kansas and Carolina? He said, right now, Kansas is bringing a big guy off the bench by the name of Jeff Graves, who had a huge national championship game, even though the Jayhawks lost. Whereas Carolina right now, because of injuries and a lack of depth, they're bringing a freshman walk-on off the bench as their first big man. You know, Graves had 16 and 16 in the championship game against Sergio. Here's Augustine, got a size advantage, so they'll double him down low. Good help by Manuel to force the tie-up, but the arrow will keep it with the Illini. You know, Augustine did a major mistake there. He brought the ball down, brought it to the deck. There's the defense doing a great job. Now watch the double team in here. Freeze it right there. Look at the double team all over him. Right now, now he makes the mistake. He brings the ball down. See, he brings it down. Allies the double up. But they get the ball because of that stupid rule that I can't tolerate. No. Alternate <laughs> possession. Carolina gets penalized there after a great defensive play because of the alternate possession rule. 
Then Bolander knocks the ball away, leading to a foul that a Carolina's going to take over as McCanns checks back into the game. Now for Melvin Scott. Again, depth or lack thereof, Dick, is going to be a major factor for Carolina tonight. Illinois wants to go, go, go as hard as they can, as fast as they can the entire game and see if they can wear down the thinner Tar Heels. Yeah, you know, kids are really resilient and like PT. They love playing time. I tell you one thing, the Orange Crush, these kids know how to compete and how to win. They've been winning the last few years. McCants with the pull-up. Big-time scorer. He's a big-time scorer. He can be as good as he wants to be. He has to make a commitment in terms of himself and his work ethic. His first bucket of the night. Hello, head on the line. Hello. And he ties it again. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Luther Head's got the great legs. There he is with a good defensive play. Bill Self told me, he said, Luther Head could have a breakout year for the Illini. Let me tell you this as well. Bill Self, just like Roy Williams, loved where they were. As you watch right now, the lob is going to be thrown over the top. There's the catch by Head. He is wow. way up, up and away. They both loved where they were, but unfortunately, there's a backdoor cut. Oh, my God, look at him jump. Mr. Matan. Powerful, strong, physical, offensively so skilled. Think we got some athletes in this game here tonight? He said, Luther, anything you can do, I can do better. Carolina back up by two. Now Williams from the corner rattles out. Rebounds Juwan Williams. Got to stop the basketball. Can't let him run the ball up the court like that. Fell into a wide open manual. Not there. See, that's his liability in yeah. shooting the perimeter shot. He's really had a struggle with that throughout his career. Great defender, more of a slasher at the offensive end. But Roy Williams has told him what he should and shouldn't do, and Manuel's gone into the program. Look at this deep three from Luther Head. No good. Loose ball to Ingram to tie it up. Nice play by Ingram hanging around the basket, getting up what we call garbage points. These are two good basketball teams. We got a lot of good players on the floor. Two proud programs with lots of tradition. Guardians almost turned it over. Still plenty of time on the shot clock here in Greensboro. Pretty good shooting early for both teams. The Illini at an even 50%, and that might go up right here. Williams with a breakaway lay-in. I really like Darren Williams. I'll tell you one thing. He understands how to play. See, Roy Williams talking to him before the game. I great admiration and respect for him. Williams averaged only six a game last year. He's over 14 a game this year, and he's already got eight here tonight. He's third in the conference in assist though last year. Yeah. Williams knocks it down. Good pump fake to get free for the jumper. He made my all underrated team along with guys like Aaron Miles, Perrin Francis. By the way, the Irish got the hurt run on him big time last yeah. night by Mark Gett. Steve Novak had a big game. Now, Felton got a piece of that shot from Williams. That's the chance. A little hesitation, and got up in the air without an idea of what to do, turns it over. Head at the other end, and he's called for the travel. We are tied at 17 in an up and down affair. The ACC Big Ten Challenge bragging rights between these two conferences when we come back. Locked up at 17, the Big Ten ACC Challenge, and I am joined by the respective commissioners of the Big Ten, Jim Delaney and John Swafford, and it's been a tough night so far for the ACC, I mean, for the, for the Big Ten, Jim, and certainly in the, the course of the history of this event, 4-0. and oh, What's going on with the Big Ten? Well, each year it's uh, pretty much been a 5-4 situation. We've had trouble on night one, uh, and, you know, I hope Michigan can hold on against NC State. We'd be 1-2. and two. We're tied here. Of course, a lot of people in the Big Ten think this thing kicked off up in Alaska with that Duke-Purdue game last week. We'd like to have it a, a ten-game series, not just a nine-game series. Uh, Michigan leading by seven late in that ball game. And, John, I guess I have to ask you, obviously, with you, your ability to bring Miami, Virginia Tech, and Boston College away from the Big East into the ACC, you've triggered drastic changes across the landscape in college athletics. What are your feelings about being at the forefront of such drastic change? Well, I think our league has made some decisions that uh, are very progressive that I think will serve our league very, very well in the future and, and uh, serve us very well uh, down the road as you look ahead in terms of our stability. And uh, I, I think that uh, will turn out to be something down the road that uh, will, will be very positive for the Atlantic Coast Conference. Tonight we spotlight two great conferences, great college basketball programs across the country. 
but characterize the long shadow that college football seems to be casting across intercollegiate athletics, in particular with regards to the decision-making process? Well, there's no doubt that, that football drives some of those decisions, but I, I think any time a conference makes uh, expansion decisions, it's made in the best interest of the conference as a whole and, and across the board in all sports. In the Atlantic Coast Conference, certainly we've enhanced our football, but our uh, identity and our history is very much tied up in the sport of basketball, and we're never going to change the commitment to basketball just as we want to enhance our football. And I think this gives us an opportunity to have the same competitive balance in football that we've had in basketball for years. In the wake of what was a very negative reaction last spring with the defection to those Big East schools, John, if you had to do anything over it, would you change anything? Well, I, you know, we wish it had been uh, a little calmer uh, uh, and a little easier process. And, and I think that uh, the situation where we, were, we visited a couple of schools uh, and, and then initially didn't ask all of them, and I don't think that served those schools well. I don't think it served us particularly well at the time. But I think when it's all said and done, it's very, very positive for us. And, uh, and, I, and I think that, you know, when you look back over the 90s, there have been a number of, uh, been over 50 changes in conference affiliation. So it didn't at all start with the Atlantic Coast Conference, but I do think it's ended in a way for us that is very positive. One big, one very big factor and one very big and most notable independent Notre Dame in terms of football remains out there. Both of your conferences, Jim, have talked about perhaps adding Notre Dame into your conference. How aggressively will you pursue Notre Dame to the Big Ten? Well, Notre Dame is a member of the Big East Conference. They are art independent in football. We had a great set of conversations with Notre Dame in 1999. We are not proactive in that area. Uh, I understand from public reports that you know they're looking at the landscape, but the Big Ten's position is we have 11 institutions which we are comfortable with. If the time comes that Notre Dame would like to talk to the Big Ten, I'm sure we would talk to them, but we're not proactive at all at this time. Thank you all for joining us. We'll back over to Dan. All right, George, thank you. Luther Head drops in a five-footer, his second bucket of the night of the Illini are now up three on North Carolina. This is the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. We are here in Greensboro, North Carolina, where the Tar Heels are trying to win their first ever game in this challenge. They're 0-4 in the last four years, the only school to lose four years in a row in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Now a travel as the Tar Heels turn it over again. That's their fifth turnover of the night. You know, it must have been a tough interview for James Delaney because I did it is. Jim Delaney wore the Carolina uniform. That's right. He played at North Carolina, but he's rooting for the Big Ten right now. He went to the same high school as J.D. Smith, a big, strong player coming from St. Benedict's in Newark, New Jersey to North Carolina. What a recruiting class Roy Williams has put together. Marvin Williams, Quinton Thomas. If people are going to beat them, they better beat them now. Here's D. Brown trying to shake Felton. Tough to do, but Brown might be able to do it with his quickness. Smith misses the 15-footer. And another rebound for Jawad Williams. You can see every whistle changes substitutions for both teams pretty much because of the hectic pace. And again, Illinois has got superior depth. They think they've got 9 or 10 to really 6 or 7 for North Carolina. And Bruce Weber's goal wear down the Tar Heels and hope to run away from them in the second half. Well, North Carolina's got six Division I blue chip players right now in uniform. David Noel will give them the seventh, and that'll be a great addition when they get him in January. Belton, no, but Augustine the rebound, and Williams again pushing it. You're not supposed to walk the ball up the floor if you're wearing orange. You've got to get it up the floor in a hurry. I think they've got a solid backcourt. These two, there they are. Look how together. nicely they play together. Yeah, you're right. Brown missed. And made the rebound, and now North Carolina's trying to run. Scott going the distance. Nice play by Melvin Scott. He's a kid that understands his role on the floor with the four big timers he's playing with. Earned a starting role. Had a lot of experience in his first two years, and he can score. His first basket of the night brings Carolina back with it one, and now they can take the lead on the steal by Felton. What a pass. What a pass. Great defense by Illinois in the rotation. Illinois did a phenomenal job. I'll tell you, the Fighting Illini and the Orange Crush fans up in Champaign, Dan, they really get after it, and they are great supporters of their program. Take a look at the bounce pass. Nice pass. There's the extra pass, but a good job rotating over. Taking away the layup, putting him on a free throw line. The foul on Brian Randall, his first. The Illini, in just three years under Bill Self, had a tremendous amount of success. Won the Big Ten tournament last year, won a couple of Big Ten regular season titles, 
had some success in the NCAA tournament. And again, there's still a young team starting three sophomores and two juniors. So just like Roy Williams left a lot at Kansas for Bill Self, Bill Self left a lot at Illinois oh, for yeah. Bruce Weber. Well, those programs are always going to be stocked really well. But the expectations are so high to win. They certainly missed Brian Cook and Sean Harrington who graduated. Melvin Scott with a nice drive, and we got a good one going here in Greensboro. trying to make it five straight years where they win the ACC Big Ten Challenge, although as Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten, said it's always been very close. They could use a win from Carolina, the ACC. Could Carolina's 0-4 in this challenge, but already we're seeing this Carolina program is headed back in the right direction. They're, they don't have a lot of depth, but they got a lot of talent. Well, first of all, he's developing a mental attitude back to that Carolina pride that went 37 consecutive years, one, two, and three in the ACC. That went and ready for this, 27 consecutive years with NCAA birth. Yep. The longest run right now is Arizona's got 19 in a row, Lute Olsen. Two years ago, the Tar Heels 8-20, and 20. last year 19-16, and 16. and made it to the third round of the NIT, but they've got higher hopes this season. What a tough catch by Powell, and he gets the roll. What a big play by a 6-6 guy inside. I tell you, he's been getting those plays all year. He's been so active on the inside. He's been a positive force, strong offensive rebounder. Seven now for Powell, the Illini back on top. Now a nice look inside for May. Misses a pretty easy one. Williams misses the follow. That was a great look by Manuel into May. Tough shot by Williams. Another offensive rebound opportunity, but now here comes Illinois. Darren Williams. D. Brown. He hasn't been able to score yet. Roger Powell, and he'll go to the line. Boy, both teams all over the offensive glass. I tell you, they really have attention on D. Brown. They have done a phenomenal job shutting down this superstar here thus far tonight. He's trying to post on the inside. They do a great job sealing off on the interior. There's Roger Powell. Does a super job of holding off on the inside. Off to a very, very big start of the season. It's better than 16 points and 8 rebounds per game. And it he could be a matchup nightmare. You start him at small forward, he's too big and strong. You start him at power forward, he's too, too quick. quick and athletic. Yeah, he's very quick. You know, you talk about Illinois' success with Bill Self. They won 25 last year with Bill. Last year prior, 26, and then 27. So in his three years, 25, 26, and 27. And that's the expectations facing Bruce Weber, but he's ready for it. He's poised. He's got the great attitude about it, and most of all, he loves being there, and he wants to be there in Illinois. Well, he is a really uh, engaging, personable kind of guy, and you should have seen it at the shoot-around today how loose and relaxed his players are. I mean, they are having a ton of fun just being around one another on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, they're having a ton of fun. They haven't lost yet. Either team, you have a lot yeah, of fun when you don't lose. Right. Scott with a bit of a push-off to try to get free down on the baseline. They're going to match up inside with Smith and May. I'd give May some touches. Nice look to Jawad Williams. Partially blocked, and back comes Williams. Again, the Illini pushing at every opportunity. May, good defensive play. Did a great job playing in that post. Nice catch by McCants, but he can't finish. Got to convert that. Great look by Felton. Look at the speed and quickness wow. of He told me his idol, Mr. Iverson. Well, you can see why. Bruce Weber says D. Brown from foul line to foul line is the fastest player in college basketball. Three-point lead for the Illini. The ACC now leading the challenge 2-1. to one. Michigan has defeated North Carolina State 68-61. to 61. Last night, Florida State beat Northwestern, and earlier tonight, Wake Forest demolished Indiana 100-67. The other game tonight, Wisconsin at Maryland, and then there are four more games tomorrow night on ESPN and ESPN2. Florida State's a program on a rise. Leonard Hamilton's club is definitely on an uptick. They are going to be a very good basketball team when they combine the recruiting class next year with their current yep. class. Going to be North Carolina ball on the baseline. They're down three to Illinois. The score could be much, much higher, but teams, they're, they're having trouble converting layups here tonight. That's a big win for Tommy Amica. His yeah. kids, that makes a statement. 
They got those sanctions all off their back now. They're going to have a great year. What a turnaround by May. Hits the floor hard, but he's okay. He's got nine, and Carolina's within one. Yeah, I'd get him a lot of touches on the inside. I think he's going to be tough for, for them to handle Illinois on the interior. Those foot problems, hopefully 100% behind him. As Sean May looks to have a great sophomore season. Williams fighting over, or Scott tried to fight over a screen to stay with Williams. Now here's Ingram for three. Kept alive by Augustine, but back comes Carolina. Scott pushing, and he's stripped by D. Brown. D. Brown with a great job defensively. He led the Big Ten in assist last year. Look at the quickness right here. That's a little Allen, baby. He went to see Iverson play Saturday night, yep. and he scored 50 <laughs> Allen. He said what a treat it was for him to watch that. In uh, the U.S. is a World Junior Championships in the 47. summer. He had 47 points in a game against Lithuania. That's a record. They were 11-1. Paul Davis played with that club as well. D'Angelo Alexander. We'll see Paul nice Davis tomorrow off the night. Ball. Ooh, won't stay down for Powell. We'll see Paul Davis tomorrow night with Michigan State host Duke in one of the big games tomorrow night of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. The early game at 7 Eastern, Ohio State hosting Paul Hewitt's Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech. And then Dick and I will be up at the Breslin Center in East Lansing. Duke and Michigan State at 9 Eastern. Also a couple of games over on ESPN2. Clemson at Purdue. What a start for the Boilermakers at Minnesota at Virginia. Had Gene Tatey as our guest, and Mike and Mike in the morning on Monday when I did my stock up and down report, and he was on cloud nine. His team played very physical. Kenneth Lowe, in fact, you go to my website where I do my player of the week and my coach of the week. Kenneth Lowe was my player of the week on my website because he was brilliant against Duke at 22 and at 26 in the game prior. How about the three big early season tournaments won by Purdue, Georgia Tech, and Dayton? How many people had that in the office for? Oh, Look nobody out. back. That's a breakdown. That's a breakdown. What about Iowa, too, in the Big Ten, beating yep. Louisville? A tie game. It's been back and forth, nip and tuck the entire night, and now the Carolina fans start to stand, and it hits the sideline, and it's out of bounds back over to the Tar Heels. Carolina fans really want something to cheer about, and I believe they're going to have it this year. They're going to have a lot of excitement, and it's only going to be the beginning, because I'm telling you now, after this year, watch out. I don't know about national titles, but top ten in a year, every year, and that's where North Carolina is accustomed to being. Bo Lander passes up the shot, finds Scott for three, rebound Augustine. We've already had seven ties in this game here in the first half. Augustine's been kind of quiet, and so has Brown. Augustine had a heck of a freshman year last year for a guy that wasn't heavily recruited. Darren Williams and Roger Powell carrying the offensive load. Now head with the lob inside, but nobody there. And that's the 11th turnover committed by the Illini here in the first half. We're tied at 26. Coming up at halftime, we'll have some answers for you. Will Missouri hold off a major upset bid? Will Andy Katz make it to courtside in Greensburg? Update us on some issues at UConn and St. John's. Florida, they have issues at St. John's. Plus, we'll update the ACC Big Ten Challenge. But if you all know right now, 11 turnovers, tie game, you got to be happy. I really look at Roger Powell. He's got to be a difference in the paint for Illinois. Good first half so far. Back to Dan and Dick, and we'll see you here at halftime. All right, guys, tied at 26, 3.28 to go in the first half here at the Greensboro Coliseum with Dick Vitale and Doris Burke. I'm Dan Schulman, and we're tied at 26, the Illini and the Tar Heels. North Carolina tried to avenge a 27-point defeat a year ago up in Champaign. That was after they had beaten Kansas and won the NIT. They were yep. undefeated. They were that was an eight-point game late in the game. Harrington had a big game. He knocked in six threes. Look at the intensity of Roy Williams. 15 years, he won nine championships, nine season championships in the Big 12, four times to the Final Four. And I think what's even more amazing, he averaged 28 Ws a year. You never heard about NCAA infractions, and his players graduated. Very similar to his mentor, Dean Smith. What made Dean so special all these years, there was never, ever a question about any NCAA violation, and yet they won, and they won with class. The foul on Justin Bolander for the illegal screen away from the ball. His first turns it back over to Illinois as they try to take the lead as we near the three-minute mark here in the first half. They're just trying to buy some minutes. Bolander, walk-on player, played in the same high school 
Here's Brown. Boy, Felton's, ha Felton's having to chase him all over the floor, Dick. And he's doing a great job defensively, getting a lot of help as well. Darren Williams off the screen, knocks down the jumper, and he's got 10 as the Illini go back on top. He's a big-time player. It's hard for me to believe that he and Bracey Wright together would lose any games together <laughs> as a 10. But you could say the same about D. Brown and Shannon Brown. Yeah, that's who true. We'll see tomorrow is electrifying for Michigan State. Up in East Lansing is Michigan State host Duke tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Now McCants launches the three wow just pick it up and shoot it man that's great offensive philosophy right there Roy Williams says I'll take that man I'll take that big three seven for McCann's one point lead Tar Heels Augustine tries to follow his own miss and he's fouled underneath by Bolander. Well, the Mid-America Conference will crown a new college football champion Thursday at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Number 50 to Miami of Ohio, already headed to the GMAC Bowl, takes an 11-game winning streak into this game against Bowling Green, winners of the West Division. It's the back championship game presented by Marathon Thursday on ESPN2. Most underrated conference in football and basketball when you talk about the MAC. And hey, let me say this. When I look at those orange uniforms, I think of Lou Du, Lou Henson, and the amazing success. One of my favorite teams was 1989 when he had Kenny Battle and company. But Lou, we wish you the best. He's battling cancer. He's got eight treatments and chemo. He's already completed five. 762 wins coming into the season. Let me tell you this, with 800 wins, 800 wins, there's no one that has not made the Hall of Fame yep. that had 800 doubles. I think he was one of the most underappreciated coaches ever. The lay-in is good by Jawad Williams. You know, Bruce Weber heard us talking about maybe future Hall of Fame coaches in a game we were doing last week. So and he, he, yeah, no, and he wants to put in a vote for his mentor, his former head oh. coach, Gene Cady at Purdue. Well, he's certainly getting close there as well. A lot of guys, Calhoun, the Bayhine. Augustine Williams. with another putback. Augustine hanging around the basket. Well, you think of what Lou Henson did. He was a teacher. He was a guy his team played well defensively. And I love him. I said, he's a Lou Du, Lou Du. We wish you the best. They, they took 20 Ws away from him because right. there was an ineligible player. I can watch May with that touch. How good is he, Dick? Uh, he's got great hands, great touch. I'm telling you, as a walk to the backcourt, and he not got injured, there'd be no coaching change at North Carolina. Matt Doherty would still be in Carolina. Roy Williams would still be in Kansas. Bill Stelf would still be in Illinois. And Bruce Weber would still be in Southern Illinois. I really believe that. Yeah, I really Roy believe Roy Williams that. does as well. He feels the exact same way you do. May, by the way, with 11. He's the high scorer in this game. I remember he had to win a game. He was absolutely brilliant against Kansas. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. unbelievable. Great game. hands. Great moves around the basket. Good mid-range jumper as well. Nice play by Brown. He's a two good basketball team. Powell, 10-footer, ties the game. I like him. You talk about Powell. Nobody ever mentions the kid's name. And he knows how to play, especially around that basket. Got the mid-range jump shot. Junior out of Jolly Illinois, has a dozen points, and now he's the high scorer in the game. Brown and Felton is doing a great job neutralizing each other. Jawan Williams knocks down a three. Ten for Jawan. He can go inside, outside. Him out of high school with a big-time reputation. Turnover. Wow. The can't for three. Whoa, they're on fire shooting the three, baby. We got a heck of a game here. Carl fans love that. Nothing like the three to get you going. Turnovers, the undoing for the Illini, and the Tar Heels making them pay with threes. Now we got a foul against Illinois. Is that before that shot? Yeah, I believe it's before the shot. No basket as Augustine is called for the foul, and that's going to give the ball back to Carolina yet again with plenty of time to get something done. North Carolina finishing up strong here, getting momentum. Uncle Mo on their side as they're going to go in at halftime with Uncle Mo on their side. Oh, I can't wait for the matchups this year. <laughs> North Carolina and Duke. Wow. As a look at Mr. Williams shooting the three, and then his buddy says, okay, you can shoot the three. I can shoot it too. So McCann says, you do it from the right, I do it from the left. He tip of the claw. Hey, the ACC this year is going to be dynamite. When you look at Wake Forest, Duke Rossa has an outstanding team. Georgia Tech and uh, the start that they're off to. 
Coming up on our NCAA basketball halftime report, Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps will get you up to date on all the latest in the sports world, including all the highlights from games going on and completed in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, signings to the baseball, and news and notes from the hardest working man in television, Andy Katz, who was in Winston-Salem uh, for the first game tonight, and then evidently got a police escort or maybe a private jet, I don't know, to get over here, as he made the short trip over to Greensboro to do his halftime report from game two here tonight. I got to find out some of the gossip down there as Indiana was blowing out. Belton misses the three, and that'll bring the first half to a close. Carolina roars to the finish line here in the first half, scoring the last six points on threes by Jawad Williams and Rashad McCann. Well, I think the great thing they did, North Carolina, is they really shut down D. Brown. You shut him down, you shut down the engine, and that's exactly what they did. They really curtailed him. I believe he got zilch, didn't score in that first half. Well, it's six-point lead for Carolina at the break, and Roy Williams standing by with Doris Burke. Doris? Roy, a good push defensively for your team to end the half. You did an outstanding job on D. Brown. What were you so good at with him? Well, Raymond did a nice job on him, but with D, everybody's got a guard in because his penetration is so good. Can this team do a better job running? You really stretched them out late. Well, you know, they got more players. We've got to do a better job. Thanks, Roy. Dan, back to you. All right, Doris, thank you. Pretty good job in the first half by Carolina. Six-point lead at the break. Time now for the halftime report as we send you back to the studio with Chris and Digger. Guys? Dan, thank you. You called D. Brown Digger the best guard in the Big Ten. Goose said great job in the first half. Great I defensive thought. job by Carolina, yeah. Chris. The other factor is when you look at May and Williams combined for 21, that's the point. ESPN2 right now. It's over uh, in College Park in Maryland. A quick start against Wisconsin. The Kenny Beckway with the steal rolls it in. Maryland takes the early lead. Then a Beckway shows the turnaround jumper. Cleans it up inside. Chris McKay with the layup. It's all Maryland right here, but Wisconsin goes on a mini spurt after this. Cuts it down to a 12-10 game. They've just tied it up. A low-scoring game midway first half. Yeah, after that 10-5 lead, you know Wisconsin's experience is going to show up. Too much experience, especially with Harrison coming. It's going to be an interesting game. Well, coming up, highlights of the Wake Forest Indiana game. Chris Paul grew up a Carolina fan, but signed with Wake Forest. And what a monster game for the freshmen, plus baseball news ahead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge is presented by 989 Sports, only on PlayStation 2, and in part by Jaguar Cars. Jaguar, born to perform. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, is brought to you by Kanaka Minolta. Well, 10 for McCants, 11 for Sean May, and Carolina late spurt to lead the Illini by six at halftime in Greensboro. More college hoops highlights in the second. But first, we've got some other sports news here. And in baseball, this is good news for the Marlins fans. Mike Lowell, their slugging third baseman, agrees to a four-year contract, $32 million bucks. That is if they can get a new stadium deal done. If not, it's just a one-year deal. Pudge Rodriguez also has sent an offer by the team as well. College football. Kevin Jones will head to the NFL draft, bypassing his senior year at Virginia Tech. The speedy running back will conclude his college career against Cal in the Inside.com Bowl. And in the NFL, they have ex extended the suspension against William Green of the Cleveland Browns for violating the league's substance abuse policy. It's his treatment purposes. That is the reason behind the extension of the suspension, according to Commissioner Paul Tangley. College basketball now. Wake Forest hosting a shorthanded Indiana team. No George Leach on the inside. They try to move Bracey right to point. There's a uh, quick move by Indiana, but you can see this. It's just got ugly, Digger. Yeah, they just couldn't handle the pressure. And when you look at Wake Forest, they're so strong inside. Their transition game was excellent. Indiana, 22 turnovers. Wake gets 38 points. Here's an example of them right here. That's Chris Paul, the freshman. He signed with Wake Forest, a huge signee, and he had a big game. 20 points, 8 assists, and 5 steals for Mr. Paul, the rookie. This is the most lopsided game in the history of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. 33 points. Indiana gives up 100 for the first time in five years. They'll take their lumps early this season. They will. they got to figure a way to score. Obviously, they don't have George Leach in that front line. They miss his body today. Well, could the Big Ten get on the board in Ann Arbor? Michigan hosting NC State. This was a tight game throughout. Daniel Horton goes around a couple of Wolfpack players. Knocks the shot down. Five-point game midway second half. Then Deion Harris down low. Nice little baseline reverse shot. 
Michigan trying to give Tommy Amaker win number 100 in his head coaching career, and they do it. Bernard Robinson for the nice little dunk here. Michigan holds on, wins it by seven, a milestone for Amaker. So it's now 2-1. The Florida State win last night, and they have split the two games tonight. So pending the outcome of the games you're watching, ACC 2-1. Now tomorrow night, four more games in ESPN and ESPN2. The centerpiece game, of course, Duke, Michigan State at the Breslin. Duke's just really struggling, no inside presence. Purdue beat them up inside, and I think that's the difference. Michigan State, Paul Davis got to have a big game. Ohio State, watch out. Georgia Tech, probably the hottest team in the country. And on ESPN2, Minnesota visits Virginia, and Clemson Purdue gets things started at 7.30 Eastern time. Andy Katz, courtside. Scoop, when you come back. Uh, six years ago tonight, Coppin State stunned Missouri in Columbia. The rematch here, would it happen again? Coppin State out of the MEAC, supposed to be a middle-of-the-pack team in that conference. They got blown out by Cincinnati this season, but a fast start. Led throughout this game, really led at halftime, and Jimmy Boykin, he's their weapon. He knocks down the triple. Arthur Johnson, digger the putback. Love him inside, but it was Coppin State first half making seven out of 12 threes. Is why they had a ball game. Missouri fighting back. Yeah, but you can expect that eventually Johnson will assert himself inside. There's the rejection. Coppin State, really no size to speak of. It's a perimeter-oriented game. Here's Young. Finally, Missouri would establish itself. This was the home opener for the team ranked number five, and they win it 72-61. They take on Indiana coming up this weekend. And Andy Katz, he's made the journey up I-40. He joins us now courtside in Greensboro. And you got some news on the health of a, of a key part of that Missouri team. That's right, Chris. I spoke yesterday with Missouri head coach Quinn Snyder, and his big concern was their perimeter depth. Because Josh felt the on-again, off-again isn't going to be eligible. My sources have told me that he is still a ways away from being declared eligible. Coach Calhoun of Connecticut thinks that he'll be eligible on Saturday against Army, but that's not what my sources are telling me. They're still checking facts within the NCAA on who paid for his NBA draft experience. Meanwhile, Marcus White may take a medical redshirt because of his back injury. That could solve some of the problems that they have in the forward position because they thought there could be a little bit of unrest and maybe some will retransfer. They are banking and getting thrown away from back at some point, hopefully for the Big East. Chris? Andy, thank you, and thanks for the Wake Forest student that zipped you over from Winston-Salem today. Give him a shout-out. All right, thank you. All right, Andy Katz at halftime. We'll come back. They are uh, just about set for a second half in Greensboro. The Tar Heels up by six over the Fighting Illini. Exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, is brought to you by Gab. Give it, get it. And Wendy's Wild Mountain Chicken and Wild Mountain Bacon Cheeseburger. It's better here. Back here in Grange Road, the Coliseum in North Carolina off the strength of two late threes. They get the end of the first half. They've got a six-point lead on Illinois going to the second half. Turnovers by the Illini, and then the Tar Heels made a pay with some outside shooting. As you can see, the ACC not only leading in this game, but leading in the overall challenge right now. Well, the reason they're leading right now by six, two major factors. One, they shut down D. Brown. He was 0 for 5. And two, they made four threes versus zero for Illinois. So the three-point shot's been big. And certainly the defense that they played, helping one another out, as what we have said, giving help on D. Brown has been made. Well, a statistical look at the first half, as Dick mentioned, Illinois didn't hit a single three-quarter. 14 turnovers, that's a major problem. Look how close the game was with 10 ties and six lead changes. It was, it was a one-point game or a tie the entire half until those two late threes by the Tar Heels in the last minute. Well, Williams has not missed the three yet this year. Yep. Six for six shooting threes, and McCants made a big three as well. Swinging the ball around nicely. Williams on the wing back out to Scott. Good man-to-man -man defense right now by Illinois. They play tough hard those man-to-man. Williams, no, but Rashad McCants getting way up above the rim. That's athleticism, my friends. When we talk about athletic, we're talking about ability to bounce off the floor, great quickness in your first step, and Mr. McCants has it. Remember, he had nine offensive rebounds against Cleveland State on the weekend. Nick Smith too strong. Got to make that shot, Smith. Great look by Brand. You got to convert that. 
Howell from the baseline. That appears to be his spot there. He's a good mid-range shooter. He has done well. And that's a little start. We talked about it the other day. Guy's not able to make that little range shot. 14 now for Powell as we check in with Doris Burke. Our coach Bruce Weber said he would like to get a quality look for D. Brown early to try and get him involved. He thought that missing the first couple of shots impacted D for the rest of the half. He also talked about the turnovers. He said, listen, Carolina's being aggressive, taking chances. We've got to be better with the basketball. Did a great job getting the ball right there, Doris, into McCann. He's got those great legs. D. Brown is struggling mentally right now. You can see a little frustration. McCann's not struggling at all. He's got 14. Darren Williams and Roger Powell are the two guys keeping Illinois in this game of the offensive end of the floor. Now 13 for Williams. Two solid players. They're the number two and three options. Brown normally their number one. Brown came into the game averaging 19 points per game so far this young season. He has yet to score here tonight. If they're going to win, Brown has to get going. Scott with a three on the feed from Williams. And Carolina continues to be hot from the outside. On the three-point shot, he has just gone to North Carolina. Yeah, the Illinois shot so well shooting the three against Temple in their zone. Nice look. Nice look. Uh, Smith to Williams. Nice look like this. It's an excellent passer for a big player. And 17 can see the whole floor. Felton, excellent passer. May will go to the line as well. Can't keep step, my friends. That's the end of ability. That's a quarterback that word. Right in the open there. You don't keep step. Break the defense down. Penetrate. Get into the lane. Drive. Dish the rock. And he has a guy that knows how to convert and how to finish in this debate. Well, you've got to know, this is a very important game for Raymond Felton because in last year's 27-point loss to the Illini, Felton turned the ball over eight times and was outplayed by D. Brown. So Felton wants to even his score a little bit here tonight. Well, he's doing a great job on a defensive end. He's right in Brown's face. He's not allowed him to score. Guy's allowed him to get some touches. Either he's trying to keep the ball away. Nice backdoor cut. Smith again, Brown is blocked, gets it back, and banks it home. Again, though, Nick Smith passing from the perimeter, now setting up the offense for the Illini. Brown ran a nice backdoor cut. They were trying to deny up the basketball. Boy, you man, Fury, deny up the ball. Here's Sean May down the post. Play a lot of two-man games with Mr. May. Got a hands on May. <laughs> and the tip is good by Jawad Williams. Williams and McCann really do a great job on the offensive boards from the win. For a guy who was questionable with a hip injury, Williams has looked pretty good. He's got a dozen. Now Powell strong into the lane. And what a night for Roger Powell now with 16. Roger Powell's been solid all year long, Dan. Nice ball movement. Williams with his first miss on a three this season after making his first six of the year. Did a great job reversing the basketball right there. Don't try to keep the ball away from Brown. Doing a pretty good job, though. He's not touching the ball nearly as much as Darren Williams. Now, see, right now, he's got items. He's making a back door. Powell again, and another assist for Nick Smith. Smith is an excellent passer. He really is. Seven foot, he can really pass the basketball. He's got great vision. He looks right over the top of the defense. Now, can he muscle up on May? Fouls him, and May will go to the line. See, that's where I'd go. I'd get the ball inside to May with that big, wide body, the great hands. He knows how to finish, use his body. So many guys don't know how to utilize their body. He does. Boy, Williams, a teacher, motivator. This way to get a little more depth, start recruiting some players. Got four kids coming in next year. Freeze it right there. See this right now? You got a no see, no ball, with right back door on him. You got to see ball, you man. Mr. Powell, see Mr. McCann? That's the one area McCann has to work on, the defensive end. As a player, you have to see ball, but you must see man. Well, in the game against Cleveland State of the weekend, the Pants was playing with two fouls, and instead of trying to take a charge, kind of stepped aside, let a guy score over him, and Roy Williams was so upset, he took him out and he benched him for the next six minutes. Even though this guy's probably going to lead him in scoring this year, Roy Williams says if he doesn't play defense, he doesn't play. Well, he's trying to set a mindset right now in his system, and his system is we're going to work as a unit and as a team. We brought over from Kansas Mr. Robinson, Steve Robinson, former head coach at Tulsa, Florida State. Does an outstanding job teaching. You should look at him right there. Also, Joe Holiday, a real veteran, and Jared Haas, who played for him that game. 
Williams pushes it into the paint, finds Randall, and the lefty knocks down a three. That's a nice way coming in, giving you some point production. Excellent move by Isaac Bruce Weber, taking out that. Let him sit for a moment or two, and then bring him back on the floor. Smith is out as well now for the Illini, who have worked a nine-point deficit down to three. Now Bolander travels. Nice pass by Manuel, but you really don't want to put the ball in the hands of Bolander, the walk-on. Great start here to the second half as McCann gets away up in the air to help the Tar Heels get up by as many as nine, but Randall's brought Illinois back within three. Outstanding moments in this game, the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports, Carolina, leading Illinois by three. Dan Schoen, Dick Vice out with you. You heard the interview. Everybody did. Doris Burke with John Swafford, the commissioner of the ACC in the first half, talking about the landscape of college sports, expansion, the Big East, and so forth. And I know you had some things you wanted to follow up on. Well, you know, I love the ACC, but it makes no logical sense to me. Boston College, where's their loyalty? Leaving the East. They belong in the Northeast. They certainly don't belong down South. I can understand Miami, Virginia Tech, but I don't understand the logic of D.C. making the move they did. And don't get me started about Intercollegiate Athletics after the disaster up there in Nebraska. What a drive by head, and then he finds Aaron Spears, the redshirt freshman from Chicago, to bring the Illini back within one. Well, he's going to give him some bulk on the inside. They're playing Bolander right now, but they'll use Spears a little bit against May. Out of bounds, a turnover against Carolina. The Illini can take the lead. Nice little pass. Look ahead with that baseline pass. Gets the double team, gets it over to Spears, and he gets the deuce. I was talking about Nebraska. I thought firing Frank Stolich is an injustice in intercollegiate athletics. When a man's 58 and 18 wins a national title, that was an absolute disgrace. Brought the coaches today, like Kevin Sampson, Gary Williams, and they can't believe it. It's a slap in the face at all coaches. A lot of Illinois fans here in this building tonight behind their team's bench, ready to explode if they can take the lead on this possession. Home defense right now by North Carolina. Williams for three. Line drive is short. Jawad Williams runs it down. Jackie Emmanuel out ahead of the pack. Nice look, though, by Felon Emmanuel with that speed and quickness. Gets ahead of the defense. They zone it, and the reason they zone, now they're going to rotate back to the man in there. They want to just buy some time until they can get May back on the floor. So he's going to sneak right out here. He's going to kick it out. There's Felton with the good look. There's the catch by Manuel. Takes it up strong. Goes to the basket. Now well, there's more great action coming your way tomorrow night as the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports continues at 7 Eastern here on ESPN. It'll be Georgia Tech, Ohio State in Game 1. And then at 9 Eastern, it'll be Duke against Michigan State. The officials are looking at the shot clock. More than anything else, I get asked, what's it like? What is Dick Vitale really like? Where, 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 is he, where does he get his energy from? Let me tell you about what Dick Vitale's doing. He's flying up to Michigan tonight, not getting there until 2 in the morning. He's doing four radio shows between 7.30 and 8.30 tomorrow oh, boy, morning. Wow, this guy's taking care of me, Chris uh, Fowler. You never yeah. did. Then he's going to a book signing, his book signing, I, I must tell you. Then we're going to go to practice, talk to some coaches. You might have a little linguine about 5 o'clock. Oh, o I have some linguine, and man. And then it's time to do another ball yeah. game tomorrow night. I'll be at that bookstore, Michigan State, on campus at 12 noon. Hey, today, what a signing down here in Greensboro. Boys and Noble, they ran out of books, Dan. They put all my books. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They ran out of books. Uh, I'd, offer them, I'd offer to give them mine but I didn't receive one, so. <laughs> I made a quarter of them. Followed him by one. Followed him by one. There in Williams, no rebound. Manuel taken away. His second opportunity is good for Randall. I tell you, Randall's earning some play and time. He's got to be impressed in the Orange first fan. 6'8", freshman. He's got seven points here tonight. At the end, the Illini are back within one as Dean Brown has returned to the game. He's got just two points on the night. Comes in averaging 19. Would you believe that Illinois on the road is down one and Dean Brown having a deuce? Williams, nowhere to go. Good defense by Ingram. Pick up his dribble. That's a no-no by Melvin Scott. You don't want to pick up your dribble. Juwan Williams, considering his options, finds Felton. Shot clock under 10. Williams for three. Right right looking for the foul, but no call. North Carolina playing without any post presence at all, without May on the floor. How valuable he is to this team. And you're going to look right now what Matt Doherty was missing. Brown on the drive, kicks it into the corner. Williams is fouled again. 
D. Brown and Darren Williams have such an incredible sense of where the other one is on the floor. They play so well together. I read a great article by Jay Mariotti last year about D. Brown. Jay writes the Chicago Sun Times, works with us in Indiana as well. And he wrote a great article about the energy that he brought and how special he was to that orange plush uniform. And I'm telling you something, even though the kid is struggling offensively right now, he's still so valuable to this team by his presence on the floor. You just watched him in practice and his personality, the, you know, how much he talks, how loud he is, he just kind of takes over the situation wherever he is. And even though he's just a sophomore, even last year as a freshman, uh, even with Brian Cook there, the Big Ten Player of the Year, D. Brown, at times, was the most influential player on the floor. Well, he was the most influential because he created the opportunities for Brian Cook, who had a big year, was a first-round draft choice in the Lakers. Hey, you talk about education. They've been on the road since last Friday. They went, they played Temple on Saturday, so this was the free throw. Then they went... Brown for three. That was close. Yeah, looked good from our angle. There's May with the rebound. Sean May's back in for Carolina along with the Rashad McCann. They have to have May on the floor to win this game. Saturday night, they went to see the 76ers, the Iverson, and then Sunday they went to the Independence Hall and yep. the Liberty yep. Bell. McCann. There's May on the glass. Oh, he's so, so valuable. He's so valuable. Oh, they need the big fella. Just like his daddy, he's a winner. I'll tell you, Dan, that team was so special down at Indiana and Bloomington. In 76, Buckner, Wilkerson, May, Benson, Abernathy. Look at him right there working. He's from out of Bloomington, Indiana. Last undefeated team in the yeah. college basketball, right? Look at the big night for Sean May. That's why I've said so many times nobody would listen as May converts. I've been in courts all over America. You can't tell me that Robert Montgomery Knight hasn't earned that honor in Bloomington, Indiana. If the administration would show some class and make that announcement and make it called the Assembly Hall slash Robert Montgomery Knight Center. They knocks them both down and now Carolina is back on top. We've had a dozen ties and I would think at least that many lead changes here tonight as Felton continues to work hard and they take the ball out of the hands of Dee Brown by running the big guy out. Well, they double up on him and get the ball in the hands. Now they got a little mismatch. He's too quick right now for May. May still stuck on Brown. Can Illinois take advantage? Now they switch back. Randall outside hit a big three. See, Felton's going to make, make him go back door. Somebody's got to put a shot up here. Reefer had off balance. Good as it goes. What a play right there. Spears. Just like Bruce Weber drew it up on the chalkboard, huh? Well, they got one just like Carolina got one in the first half. Yep, but McCann right. picked up that loose ball and shot a three. Illinois now up by one. McCann's for three. What a game he is having here tonight. He's a big-time offensive player. Very skilled. And he's taking good shots now. He's starting to understand shot selection. 17 for McCann. Augustine oh. ties the game. Goes down to the post. A little left-hand jump hook. Big-time basketball right now on a collegiate level. Our Illinois North Carolina. Our third team tie of the night. Made with good position. Williams on the glass. Finally brought down by Spears. The big question to keep watching. Will the bench strength of Illinois be too much for North Carolina down the stretch? North Carolina's got just two points off the bench tonight. Illinois's got 13. Not only that, they got minutes. They got minutes. They got people that are looking better than resting. Brown leaning in on the shot. Hey, with the rebound. Look at him. Look ahead. Who will know? Give it up. Give it up. Let's go. Let's tell you what. The two on one play. That's North Carolina. Best play for the deep. Now it's the Roy Williams era, baby. Yes, sir. Get ready for Roy Williams and the Tar Heels. You better beat this guy now. But when he gets Marvin Williams and J.D. Smith and company, watch out. First Illinois with the wild turnaround of the shot clock buzzer. And then Felton from McCants, Carolina, running and leading right now. Welcome back to Greensboro, where North Carolina leads by two. Doris Burke alongside of Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale. And we just want to remind viewers that tonight's game is available on ESPN's high-definition service, ESPN HD, made possible by both Phillips and Best Buy. And just a reminder, folks, 
on Friday night, the first NBA telecast on ESPN HD featuring the NBA champion San Antonio Spurs visiting the Orlando Magic. And folks, call your cable operator or satellite provider and request ESPN HD, especially those of you in San Antonio and Orlando. And Dick Vitale, I know you have a high-def screen at home <laughs> when you're watching basketball at any level. It's a great, great service. I tell you, I got it right here the John Saunders Theater. I made my theater after John Saunders. Doris, you would not believe the high-def setup that Dick Vitale has at the John Saunders Theater. It is worth the trip down to Florida. We're going to have an HD game coming out in Maryland and Florida next week from Gainesville. Wow. Here's D. Brown open in the corner, knocks down the three, and the Illini are back on top. He finally gets an open look. I agree with Digger. This kid is a tremendous player. We haven't seen the real kid here. Come on, made of Bolander. Bolander gets a deuce. How good does he feel to walk on? <laughs> Both big guys for Illinois went out to the foul line to guard May, and Bolander was wide open under the basket. I mean, he got a layup that I could have made because of the presence of May. A good show by Bolander to slow Randall down at the free throw line. Williams with a nice look inside. Augustine strong enough to get it up and in. And that's what they're looking at of Augustine. They want to get some point production down to the low boxes. So many teams have perimeter presence, but they have very little inside presence. Unofficially, Dick, 14 lead changes and 13 ties in this great basketball game here tonight. Well, as my buddy Dick Hoops twice, who I'll see tomorrow, an outstanding journalist in the world of basketball, he said one to five for North Carolina is as good as anyone, and I certainly concur. We'll talk a little bit more about them and their lack of depth. Bolander with a big bucket off the bench for the Tar Heels, but they're still down by one. game here tonight and it seems like it's been a one-point game the entire night right now illinois up by one of north carolina don't forget thursday night on espn2 quarterback ben roethlisberger leads 15th ranked miami of ohio into the mid-american conference championship game against bowling green miami's on an 11 game winning streak right now it's the back championship game presented by marathon thursday at seven on espn2 aren't you glad you don't have to say Roethlisberger wow. all night long. Hey, look, that put Jackie Manuel right now on D. Brown. Size trying to deny him the ball, and they got Felton playing Williams. Carolina's done an outstanding job defending D. Brown. Look at Brown running all over the court, just trying to get an open look, and he can't shake Manuel. He's trying to get free. He's trying to utilize the screen, move on out the basketball, a little bit of dodging. Just give me the ball. I'm going to get stuck behind the screen. There it is. Yes, sir, right behind the screen. Let me tell you, people, he earned that. He really moved so well without the basketball and set the defensive player manual up. Never gave up. Just kept going side to side, back and forth, using screens, and finally getting open. Williams again with the ball fake into the paint and will draw the foul. Let's go back down to the other end. Dick, tell us what you're talking about. See, watch this right here. Moving without the basketball. Freeze it. See, right here. Comes around. Right there. Moving without the ball. Very active. Now we're going to see him dodge right behind that screen. Look at him. He's Freeze it right there. Right there. Squirt. Shoots the jumper. Boy, did he work hard to get open and still had the stamina on the legs after all that running to knock down a three. All of D. Brown's points have come here in the second half. They missed by freezing twice. twice. Couldn't hear me. Couldn't hear me. A breakdown. Unbelievable. Got to get a key Turnover. Now wow, Carolina back within two. He did a great job, Don. That was an example of moving without the ball for a lot of you young kids. An area where a lot of people don't. Look at the big orange push fans chucking up. Yeah, there's a lot of them here in yes, Greensboro. Sir. Carolina can tie or take the lead on this trip. They're excited about this team. This team's certainly a threat for the Big Ten title this year. May ties the game. He is so strong, so strong inside. He utilizes the body exceptionally well. He has 19 points tonight. He has scored at least 17 in all four games for Carolina this season. Darren Williams for three. And the offensive rebound for Augustine. Brown into the paint, just too much hops, wave off the basket as the foul comes before the shot and it's going to go against Jackie Manuel. He played in high school at Proviso East High School with Shannon Brown, who we'll see tomorrow. Just turned 18 years of age, had a spectacular game. I'll tell you what, 
Don't cry for the Dukies. They will find a way to get it back. Mike Krzyzewski's not in the Hall of Fame. I ask everybody to say, what happened to the Dukies? Hey, it's the development stages right now. When Reddick, you and that company, they're going shooting threes. They're a threat against anybody. And you've got to respect the brilliant coaching ability of Mike Krzyzewski. By the way, a, a news note on Duke. Maybe some people didn't Michael hear it Thompson, earlier. Michael right. Thompson yeah, has decided that uh, he's going to transfer and will leave. And so he'll be eligible for the second semester next year. There's going to be some schools interested in trying to recruit him. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I'll tell you what. Duke could have certainly utilized Chris Humphreys, who originally committed to that, and then changed his mind and went to Minnesota. Look at Carolina again, forcing Brown to give up the ball. Augustine to Randall, and McCann is called for the foul. Great job of moving the ball, letting the post touch the ball, and then bringing it to the offside. Carolina fans did not like that call, Dick. I tell you what, Bruce Weber is a solid tactician. You can see his team fundamentally has an understanding of the half-court game. You can tell a lot about a coach, about the way they execute their half-court offensive system. A couple of years ago, when Weber was at Southern Illinois, they were playing Illinois in a tournament out in Las Vegas, then coached by Bill Self, of course, and Illinois won in a very close game. And the AD at Illinois, Ron Gunther, said, you know what? If Coach Self ever leaves, we should keep an eye on Bruce Weber. Well, he that was a well-coached team. We kept an eye on him, all right. Signed him to a nice mega contract. He averaged 21 minutes a year in five years at Southern Illinois. D. Brown, quick three, rattles out, and McCann runs down the rebound. Center it, give it up. See, he'd be better off giving it up and going without the basketball. Got to find somebody now. When he's down, throw to the post. When in doubt, give it to Sean May. 21 points on the night. He gets in so deep, they can't allow him to get that deep position down in a low box. He's able to sit in that three-second area. Williams turns the corner. Brown for three. And the foul's going to go against the Illini. It'll be on Powell. I tell you, Roy Williams has definitely brought a buzz here to this program. He was the right man for that job once they decided to let Matt Doherty go. Roy Williams helps. A healthy Sean May helps. 21 points tonight, and it's Carolina by two here in Greensboro. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge is presented by 989 Sports, only on PlayStation 2, and in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com and nikegridiron.com. Well, we had a feeling this would be some kind of an exciting game here tonight, and it certainly has been between Carolina and Illinois. Countless lead changes. Tomorrow night, you're equally excited about going to East Lansing, huh? Duke wow. and Michigan State. Well, you the is zones up there going bananas. You got the Dukies of Mike Krzyzewski, Tom Izzo, Michigan State. Tonight, we got North Carolina, Illinois, and we're getting paid for this. I mean, you talk about living a dream. Are you kidding me? This is living a dream. Game one on wow. ESPN tomorrow night at 7 Eastern. Paul Hewitt's Ramblin' Wreck. If you haven't seen Georgia Tech and what they did in New York City, you got to check them out tomorrow night in Columbus against the Buckeyes. Duke and Michigan State tied for the sixth spot of the coaches' poll on ESPN2 tomorrow night. Clemson, Purdue, and Minnesota, Virginia. Hey, we got to step up and pick up some linguine and kibasi on the way up there Definitely. tomorrow. Definitely. Yes. Sure. Right. I'll let you figure out who's going to eat the linguine and who's going to eat the kibasi. All right. And, and with you in there, we not, might need a little extra linguine, right? A little rigatoni. <laughs> Two-point game. Bruce Weber, he knew this would be a tough test and a tough stretch for his team at Temple. Then this game here. Then to Chicago to play Arkansas. Then to the Jimmy V to play Providence next week. We'll have that game here on ESPN on Tuesday night. That's a good Providence team. Could be a sleeper in the Big East. Great rebound by Darren Williams. He's Couple had a big guy. He's had a good win over Alabama. Ryan Gomes, Jimmy Welsh. He's got a club. Very experienced. I like Williams. One of the underrated players in America. Oh, he really is. Good strong inside post player. Arizona, Texas, by the way, the first game at the Jimmy V Classic. A week from tonight here on ESPN. Illinois and Providence, the second game. Here's the matchup right out here. Falcon V. Brown. Williams trying to shake Scott. Finds Augustine. And a block by. Loose forward, grabbed by the Illini, and Powell scores in his foul. I tell you, Powell's a star on the inside. The kid doesn't get a lot of notoriety and publicity. He's just so working in life, hanging around the basket. There's the block shot by May. 
got the long arms, and there's Powell comes right over, strong, very physical. He is really tough around the basket. Very tenacious player. He has 20 points in the game, too shy of his career high. This is the 15th high in this game here tonight. Now, what a game it's been here for the ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, Illinois, and North Carolina, with Big Vital and Doris Burke. I'm Dan Schulman, Carolina, 0-4 all time in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, including a loss up in Champaign to the Illini last year. But the Big Ten has never won one of these. They've lost all four of them to the ACC, although all four have been close. And now a hold is called on Powell, and I think that's his fourth. And it's his fourth. Bruce Weber is stunned with that call. Two years in a row, taking the Salukis to the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16, two years ago. They're in a bonus right now yeah. as well. Williams is going to go to the line, and now Powell is going to go to the bench as we get another look at the foul. They get it for a little push-off down on the inside on Williams. So out goes Powell, a huge contributor for the Illini tonight as Nick Smith comes back in, and you can see how frustrated Powell is that he has to leave this game. He'll be back in with about three minutes on the clock. Jawad Williams, questionable to play tonight because of a hip injury, now has 15 points in the game as Jackie Manuel has returned for Carolina, taking the place of Melvin Scott. Roy Williams is getting a lot of mileage, Dick, out of really six and a half players tonight with Bolander, the walk-on, playing sparingly as the seventh guy. David Noel, who was a very important player for them last year, out with torn ligaments in his thumb. He won't be back for about six weeks. Yeah, they hope to get him sometime in January for the conference. And he'll be a great addition, very athletic. He's originally recruited as a football player. D. Brown turns the corner, takes the bump, misses the shot, and Williams again defending the glass well. Erratic shot right there by Brown. Felton at the other end is fouled. And again, Bruce Weber says, I cannot believe what my eyes are seeing here tonight. Notice all the players when they go over to Williams and put an arm around them. It's that love affair. Yep. As you look at Weber, you cannot believe it. This is the big time for him right now. But they had that nice win on a road against Temple. Played really well. Certainly not one of the strong teams that John Chaney's had over the years. Dalton hits the front end to make it a three-point game. Carolina leads the NBA in terms of players. And they got 12 that are playing in the NBA. Kentucky has 11, Arizona 10, Duke 9, and UCLA 9. Well, North Carolina, as you said, with Roy Williams here now. And the recruiting class, he thinks it's special that he's got in. And Felton almost steals it. You think it's only a matter of time before Carolina's back amongst the elite, right? Yeah, Kevin Thomas, J.D. Smith, Marvin Williams. James on Curry coming in next year. Listen to the house now. There's the Carolina faithful. They like what they see. They smell a possible big win. This would be the first big W for Roy Williams at North Carolina if they could hang on and get this one. Carolina's 3-0, Illinois is 3-0. But this is the toughest test either team has faced. Illinois is not going away that easily. Another rebound for Jawad Williams, his ninth. I'd get some touches to May. Everything inside out. I'd bring it to May. They did. He missed, but the foul is good. By but his presence in that three-second area, it opened up the lane for the offensive rebound. Smart play, bringing the ball into May. I'd let every possession, the ball go to him first, and you go inside out. A 6-0 run for Carolina, Dick. There he is. Now watch right here. See how he comes right down the lane for that tip in? The lane is wide open, concentrating on May on the inside with a little jump hook, and here comes Jackie Manuel, a slashing player. He's a slasher. Raymond Phelps saying, come on, let's hear you, Carolina fans. Well, they're going to hear a lot of the Carolina faithful this year. I can't wait. I can tell you, North Carolina and Duke, it is going to be special again. Two great coaches, a Hall of Famer and Mike Krzyzewski, and a future Hall of Famer and Roy Williams. In early February at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill on ESPN, and then to wrap up the regular season in early March back at Cameron on ABC. No better rivalry. I hear about Ohio State, Michigan football, Red Sox, Yankees, but when they're playing well, they're on top of the world. Already they got them as the governor. Why not the president? <laughs> The last six points have been scored by Carolina. 
right now you need a big play. Dean Brown's got to find a way to step up and make the big play. Seems Jack Emanuel, good decision by Roy Wynn, putting the size on Brown. Look, Emanuel taking that pass. He wants to challenge the player to get over the top of the screen. He bumped him. But oh, is he playing with intensity? And that's what Roy Williams wants. You can feel it. You don't mind a kid making a mistake when he's playing with that kind of intensity. And they're not in the bonus yet. Roy Williams called Jackie Manuel in and he said, Son, you're a great basketball player, but you're not a shooter. You've got to stop taking threes, play defense, hustle, hit the floor, and you'll play. go for rebounds, and you'll play. And it's come true tonight here for Manuel. Well, Dan, it's so important for players to understand their strengths and their weaknesses. Randall, way long on the three. You want the ball in this kid's hands, belt. They need a defensive stop. The Illinois has got to come up with a stop. With hands wide open in the corner. Nick Smith brings down the loose ball. Look out. Williams never avoided a collision. And Augustine strong to the rim as he is challenged and fouled by McCann. Good play there by McCann's throw to make them have to earn him at the free throw line. Take away the easy layup. I like Bruce Weber. They made a great choice. You talk to him. He has a great understanding of the Big Ten. 18 years with Gene Cady. There's the foul. He's going to make him go to the line and earn him. Boy, this is what Roy Williams really wants to see from the shot of McCann's too. You talked about it. Some inspired basketball. Giving it everything he's got every night. Got to make these free throws down the stretch, Dan. You're not winning a basketball game in the last five minutes. Down six, missing free throws on the road. Dick John Madry tells us the Illini have missed nine in a row from the field and five in a row from the line. Tough to win when you do it end. It's amazing that you're only down six, and no one knows better than John, one of the best stat guys in the business. Augustine's numbers on the night. Illinois hanging on right now, down six. And has another free throw. Two all six in a row on the line. Good spacing by North Carolina, running that passing game, getting a lot of motion. Relying on the starting five for the most part now as Manuel has gone back to the bench. McCann, no call. Eight-point lead, Carolina. He's as good as any wing player in posting up in college basketball. He really understands how to utilize his ability and post up on that box. 19 for Rashad McCann. It's a must possession for Illinois. Luther Head for three. Oh, what a shot. That is a major three by Luther Head. After nine straight misses from the field. Go to May. Go to May. Should have went right inside the May. Throw it into him. Augustine sits it away. Maybe didn't step to the ball. Could be a little fatigued. Darren Williams, James Augustine. And now Illinois is back within three. I think May is a little tired right now. Look at the way he's going up and down the floor. He did not step to the basketball. Good timeout by Roy Williams. And again, Carolina's got no real backup at center. So May has to absorb a lot of minutes. Well, there have been so many incredible moments for this North Carolina basketball program. As we celebrate our 25 seasons in college basketball, it's time to flash back into the ESPN archives. Vince Carter really looks impressive tonight. He's got the great legs. He's got tremendous jumping ability. Oh, oh, no! Throughout the season, you're going to see something from our archives, a flashback in every one of our nearly 400 games. And you were a little bit excited that night on that high oh, riser bid starter, bit, huh? Oh, a little Canadian incredible. flag as they, I thought they were doing that for me, but they're doing that because Vince is up in Toronto. I clued in that. Hey, you know, if I had to pick my position, my five best in, in terms of the ACC over the last 25 years that we've been on the ESPN, my position. I'd go with Tim Duncan as my center, Lenny Bias as my small forward, my big forward, Christian Leitner, Michael Jordan as my second guard, and Jason Williams and Duke as my point guard. Wow. Not a bad five, Not huh? bad. <laughs> Grant Hill, I'd have to, I gotta give the edge to Bias over Grant. I love Grant. Felton baseline. Gets his man in the air and draws the foul. Raymond Felton's had a terrific game tonight, quarterbacking the Tar Heels. He really has. He's done a great job, not only quarterbacking, and understanding the role of a point guard he's demonstrating truly what we mean by a point guard tonight he's also doing it on the defensive end look at phil ford i didn't have phil ford i was going to say he, I, yeah, no, but he, he didn't was play. before right he was before yeah, yeah, yeah he was prior obviously he's yeah. the best of all time at the point guard slot david thompson would be the best of all time at the small forward slot 
When we're talking simply ESPN the last 25, 25 years. years. Belton looking for his 10th point of the night. And he's got it. 10 points and a solid job understanding the system of Roy Williams and defending on the and stopping the star Brown. Update from College Park here. Devin Harris and the experienced Badgers trying to win a road game here. Harris, the only Badger in double figures, knocks down the triple to make it a one-point game. Then, Jamar Smith on the other end. This is the first Maryland three-pointer of the game. They're up by three. We'll keep you posted. All right, Chris, thank you. The ACC leading the, the challenge, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, 2-1 to one right now. And also leading in this game, four more great games coming tomorrow night, including... Duke and Michigan State. Upcoming telecasts on ESPN HD include Maryland and Florida next week. And the NBA game, the Spurs and the Magic on Friday night. That'll be this season's first NBA telecast on ESPN HD. Well, it will pile back like we expected at the three to mark. Illinois down five. Powell to miss. Keeps it alive. Manuel back into the game for defense. Loses the ball. to the lineup. Great defensive play right there by Head to keep the ball alive. Bruce Weber is going with Dee Brown and Darren Williams and Luther Head. His three-guard look. Now Powell comes out, and Nick Smith has checked back into the game for Illinois. They like Nick Smith on the floor at the end of the game. He makes free throws. Good passer, good shooter, not a real physical guy. Williams with a great fake and great use of the glass to bring the Illini back within three. Aaron Williams, nice, under control, squared his body exceptionally well. The old-fashioned way, utilizing the glass like John Wooden used to teach down there at UCLA. You know, Dick, although Williams is not nearly as flashy as Dee Brown, he had almost as many assists as Brown did last year. He's really two point guards on this team. Yeah, he was third in the conference in assists at 4.5, and Brown led the lead at 4.9. Manuel is fouled by Williams. And Bruce Weber again says, I'm just not buying these calls here tonight. Well, he had some good clubs up there at Southern Illinois. I used to love Pierre Mean and Williams that played for him. His great contacts within the state of Illinois. He's originally from Milwaukee, Midwest guy, through and through, Big Ten guy. After all those years, he's an assistant at Purdue. He got a commitment of Manuel's a guy didn't like to see on the line if you're Illinois. Out of the kid named Bullitt from out of West Aurora High School, same high school at least Damian Mason playing now for Mark Gettle will be a special player eventually. Sports Center coming up next year on ESPN. Manuel really struggling to shoot free throws early this season. He was two of seven coming into the game tonight and just missed a couple. Yeah, that's not his fourth day. His fourth day playing on the defensive end, run the court. Augustine. Smith. Rebound Augustine. Brown can tie it. Wide open. Jawad Williams with a rebound for Carolina. He's now got himself a double-double. He ran a timeout for Carolina. He ran this can't get going. They did a great job. Augustine getting the ball over to him on that wing. Just not going down for him. Now, he can't believe it. They've had a couple of really good looks here with the last couple of minutes. He's always got a smile on his face. Enjoys playing. Has a great love for playing. This guy enjoys coaching. Has a great passion and love for the people up in Kansas. Pull us again tonight. And certainly loves it back home at Carolina where he served 10 years as an assistant. Already 10 team fouls committed by Illinois. So two shots the rest of the way for the Tar Heels. Each team with a couple of timeouts remaining. If North Carolina wins this game, this would be the first big win in the Roy Williams era. They've beaten Old Dominion by 26, Davidson by 23, and then really struggled on the weekend with some injuries to beat Cleveland State. They were losing that game with three minutes to go, the Tar Heels were, but they wound up winning by six. Illinois has also not played that much tough competition. They were at Temple, but Temple doesn't have uh, as good a team as they normally do, and Illinois has won three games rather handily coming into tonight. Well, there's been so many shocks already in college basketball. Top four teams beaten in a matter of yep. a five-day period. It shows you the parity. May spins to the baseline. And the Illini come down to the rebound. They're back at it, down three with 2.15 to go here in Greensboro. Williams handling the basketball, trying to penetrate. Little one-on-one, -on -one. good play defensively by Williams. Rotated over from the help side. Illinois, the whole bench, looking for a goaltend, I think, there on Williams. I didn't think it was goaltending in that sequence. No, I agree with you. 
Great help be there by Juwan Williams. Nick Smith left alone. Gets it back. Deep around another one. Well, the tip is good by Luther Head. What an athlete. We talk about athletic ability. Great jumping. He and McCants really can stop. Illinois won't go away. They're down one. Raymond Felton coast to coast. Juwan Williams. Hanging around, nobody blocks out. Hanging around the low box on the offside. That's the offensive rebound. Uh-oh. Raymond Felton is down, rubbing that left half. And the way they are tending to it, you hope it is nothing more serious cramp. than a cramp. We talk about the great point guards in college basketball. You think of the guy we saw, Jameer Nelson, certainly the head of the clash. You talk about the likes of Chris Thomas, who had a bad game against Travis Diener. Yesterday, as you watch him right there, looks like he had a cramp. Well, one of the biggest concerns for Roy Williams, we talk generally about the lack of depth. They don't have a backup point guard. There's nobody who can really do the things anywhere close to as well Not many as in Raymond Pell. Yeah, you're right. Not they, many in the country. But they don't even have a natural point guard to back up. The closest exactly. thing they would have is Melvin Scott as a natural two guard who's going to handle the ball against some pressure for Carolina until, if and when, Felton can get back into the game. And immediately with Felton out of the game, they're going to face all kinds of defensive pressure. Yeah. People are going to try to trap the basketball. Scott now defending Brown. Manual on Garvin Williams. Sports Center next here on ESPN. Trying to spread the court. Head on the drive. A block by May. Great timing by Scott. By May. I said Scott have been Sean May. What a screen by Sean May there. On the head. Here's, he just knows how to play. Scott gets the basketball with Felton on the bench with what looks like a cramp. Running down some clock right now with a three-point lead. I 30 think second timeout, Carolina. They did a great job rotating over. First we see the first block shot by Williams. I think Williams and May had two great blocks. Outside. Did you look at the, the the offense, the rebounding, the block shots, the passing? Sean May has done a marvelous job at both. He's a marvelous court. player. We saw that last year. We witnessed it early in the season when they beat Kansas in the NIT, and they were undefeated until he broke his foot. They were a different basketball team. He is so important because he gives them post presence. As you take a look at here at the timeout situation, the foul situation. Carolina up by three. They've got possession right now with a minute 11 to go and 17 seconds on the shot clock. Felton remains on the bench, but he's hollering out instructions for Melvin Scott right now, who is taking over for Felton as the point guard. I'll probably give him one more possession, and I think we'll see Felton on the floor if they don't do something in his possession. He's trying to stretch that leg out on the bench. Scott rattles out on him, but the rebound to the car heel. And they get a new 35. Yep. They're going to just force the foul situation, spread the court. Under a minute to go. He made such an excellent passer for a big player. That's another one of his great assets. Luther Head reaches around and fouls Rashad McCants. McCants last year, a 70% free throw shooter, came into the game tonight, 77% so far this season. One possession game right now. He converts here. He makes it a two possession game. And he will get two shots. Double bonus for Carolina. McCants already with 19 points in the game. Did a great job defensively on D. Brown. That's the story of this game. Shutting down Mr. Excitement for Illinois. They've done a phenomenal job keeping him under control. This kid can flat out play. We did not see the real D. Brown tonight. Nope. One of two. And Oh, that, that can't happen. That's going to be frustration city right there. Second time. Got a new shot clock. Dick, it was Jawad Williams who tapped it to McCann. Jawad Williams is so underrated. I'm telling you, he is so underrated. Yeah, Look at the intensity of Roy Williams. You think that becomes contagious? The sophomore class gets almost all the hype. Felton, who's going to come back in, and McCann's in May. But Jawad Williams is a real important player on this team. Very underrated player. Look at him coaching right here. He's not going to be a coach. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn from Roy Williams. I'm going to coach. I hope somebody gives Matt Doherty a chance after he did a 
a great job at Notre Dame. He was in a tough situation in North Carolina. His passion, his work ethic, he would definitely serve somebody well if given an opportunity. And Roy Williams would endorse him. Scott, one of two. Felton's kick back into the game for McCann. Two possession game, five-point lead, Carolina. Williams on the drive, no. Augustine, the follow, no, but he's fouled. Stops the clock right there, 30 seconds, got to make these free throws. And remember, Illinois has hurt themselves big time on a free throw line. They have struggled on that line. They are just 7 of 16 on the night. 7 of 16, that's under 50%. Even you're, a dummy like me could figure that out. Are you you're, all, you're all over it. Oh, oh, come on now. 7 of 17. Got to make those free throws. Chris Fowler, they got to make those free throws. Enough to be the difference between a win and a loss here tonight, potentially, for the Illini. I tell you, the Illini are going to have a lot to cheer about this year. Trust me, this is going to be one heck of a basketball team. Seven for 18. And now a foul will send Felton to the line. This could be the start of something big in the Roy Williams era. But are you shocked or surprised? I'm not. Not at all. A we knew when he arrived, he was going to set a special tone. ACC, top four or five teams. Wide open parity. Oh, it's unbelievable. Look at Georgia Tech. Look at Maryland tonight with the Big Ten champs two years in a row. And they're playing with a whole new task. Look at what Wake did in the end. Wake is outstanding. Florida State's getting better. We don't know yet about Virginia. But we do know that Duke is going to be right up there again. You just you know that magical formula. Mike Krzyzewski, Yui, get Reddick, get Duhon, Randolph, and Williams. They got enough personnel, great coaching. Powell back into the game for Smith. Smith has been out there for a couple of minutes, and there's one of the big stories of the game. Illinois, free throw line. from the free throw line. Tonight. Six point game. Felton. Jack Emanuel's back in for defense. Yeah, he's done a great job defensively. And Felton, to me, did a phenomenal job setting the tone in the first half, shutting down D. Brown. How about Sean May at 260 wow. pounds? Lighter than last year, 10-15 pounds. But he's going to have to play 35 minutes tonight because they don't have a backup for him. And he's done a great job tonight. Every night. Most kids love that. The three no for Brown. Head misses on the follow. May comes up with a loose ball. And now May is fouled, and it is all but over as North Carolina is on the verge of the first big win in the Roy Williams era. And it will not be the last. Trust me when you tell me that. And our 989 Sports Player of the Game, Sean May of North Carolina, 21 points and 14 rebounds tonight. He's been such a force inside. His presence, his passing ability, he's a space eater. He's an absolute space eater. So different than what his dad played. His dad was a wing player with great range. As a shooter, was such a winner. And what he's going to feel like a million. They're going to drive back in about 50 minutes yeah. tonight. Down there to Carolina. Get back to Chapel Hill. Don't forget the a ACC Big Ten Challenge continues tomorrow night. Wow. Four more games, including Duke at Michigan State. 9 Eastern here on ESPN. A three by Darren Williams. And a timeout by Illinois with just six and a half seconds to go. And they're still down five as we send you back to the studio in Chris Fowler. Well, Roy Williams can certainly empathize with poor free throw shooting. Think back to the championship game. Another great finish over on ESPN2 as Wisconsin has battled back on the road to level things with Maryland inside of eight minutes to go. That game again over on ESPN2. Guys, back to you. I'll tell you one thing. Tomorrow night you talk about the end zone, the place being on a college campus is going to be unbelievable the enthusiasm and the energy and they're all emulating cameron indoor stadium i mean the cameron crazies have set the tone for around america with the rowdy reptiles we'll see next week yep. when we go to gainesville down there in florida you're going to get your first look in person tomorrow night at luol dang the outstanding freshman for wow. duke and we'll get a look at a new michigan state lineup really playing four guards at the same time right kelvin porter's yep. playing the power forward slot to get some great minutes down to shannon brown Silver was the MVP in the Spartan Classic over the weekend, playing power forward. You know, played, played really well. He knew with such a big reputation. I mean, I can't wait. We're going to get right out of here. We're running to the airport. We're jumping on a plane. We're getting into East Lansing, and we're getting ready for that showdown tomorrow. <laughs> it's a tough life you lead, huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a great life. <laughs> 64, and I act 12. Yeah. 
Sports Center coming up next year on ESPN. Not everybody's having fun tonight. Nick Smith and the Illini feel they had this one within their grasp. Some turnovers in the last minute of the first half led to a couple of threes. And then bad foul shooting here in the second half. And boy, Illinois, I don't know if you want to say they let it slip away, but it was right there for them. They came back from a nine-point deficit in the second half. But Carolina, give them credit. They made plays when they had to down the stretch. Well, you got to give Carolina credit with the way they defended D. Brown. I think that that set the tone in that first half. I mean, they earned it with that defensive effort. And D. Brown, I just love him. Just watch some of the things he does on the floor. I mean, the kid is a big-time player. He's a PT peer, and there's no doubt in my mind, despite the so poor night he's had. Sports Center, as soon as we're done here in Greensboro, and we are all but done with six and a half seconds to go. And everybody loves Raymond, my friend. <laughs> everybody, and I know he loves Raymond. Yes, sir. Didn't know how much you would get out of Jawad Williams or Jackie Manuel tonight because of injuries, and both Williams and Manuel were major contributors to the Carolina cause here tonight. I think a great point guard should think of Aaron Miles, underrated down here at Kansas, yep. a tremendous point guard. There's so many. It's the year of the point guard in college basketball. Seven-point lead for the Tar Heels. They'll go to 4-0. and Illinois will drop to 3-1 and on the season as the ACC now takes a 3-1 to lead in the ACC Big Ten Challenge trying to win this event for the fifth consecutive year, all five years that it's been in existence. The final score from Greensboro, North Carolina 88 and Illinois 81. It's ACC 3, Big Ten 1 right now with Thompson and Maryland playing over on ESPN2 even as we speak. For Dick Vitale and Doris Burke, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for joining us tonight here in Greensboro. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Carolina wins. Sports Center is next.